Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to me hating my life. Because I, I, oh boy. I spent the last several hours uh, looking through, I asked Reddit again, same thing I did with Tartaria, I said, hey, who's somebody good for me to go talk to, or not talk to necessarily, but go and look at. And uh, what they came up with was a guy by the name of uh, Eric Dubé. Uh, from what I understand, this Eric Dubé fella, let me uh, give him a look up really quick, just so you guys can see, because um, the first thing that comes up is, you know, other people arguing with him, but so far as I understand, he's pretty big in the uh, the flat earth sphere. Um, you know, again, I, <laughs> hard to say, I just, you know, just really started to have a chance to look at this today, but Eric Dubé was one of the people who was recommended consistently, so I decided to take a look into him. And this guy is, he's prolific. He posts a lot. Like, like a lot. Um, quite a bit, in fact. <laughs> so, what I did was I, I pulled together, you know, I got my, my pro flat earth, and I've got my anti flat earth. And whereas usually when we look at conspiracy theories, you know, be it Bigfoot or, or something like that, Typically, what I'll do is I'll come at it with an open mind. I'll say, all right, well, there's probably some some truth to this. Uh, you know, the, even with Tartaria, there's like, ah, oh, well, you know, the, the Catholic Church sure did say a lot of stuff that wasn't true. But that doesn't mean all of history is a lie. So usually there's a little kernel, a nugget in there that I can be like, okay, you know what, sure arguably in this situation the the nugget the kernel of truth we're dealing with is that the government lies to people all the time which like yeah the government lies to people all the time that's a well-known fact um but I, I mean i really feel like that's not quite enough um in this situation i feel like what we're dealing with here with flat earth is a a just denial of reality on a scale that i actually can't comprehend um, I mean, and, and part of the reason that, you know, that I chose this guy is because he's got a lot of points. He makes a lot of points. Um, I found this one a little funny because, uh, I've driven across Lake Pontchartrain. Um, so what I did just to give you guys, uh, some, some, some background here, if my, if my computer will respond, like, all right. So what I did here is I went to the very beginning of the bridge. This is the start of the Lake Pontchartrain Bridge. To give you an idea of how big that lake is, big lake. Big lake. But what I did, I've driven across this bridge, is I went and I started at the beginning of the bridge, right here. I'm also going to really quickly close a whole bunch of other tabs because I think they're slowing my computer down massively. So give me one moment. Because they're all from old read. Oh, okay. Yep. Please stop asking me if I want to close all the tabs. Like, if I didn't want to close all the tabs, I would not ask you to close all the tabs. Why is that one still open? Ah, because I didn't hit close all tabs yet. There we go. Now we're all good. Uh, anyway, what I did was I started at the beginning of the bridge right here. Okay? And I, actually, you know, I think I started even... I think i was further back here in that that image so i think we're about right here and new orleans is over this way now keep in mind this is google street view this is literally a car that drives along the roads and it has cameras attached to it panoramic cameras so it's constantly taking pictures of everything you know see that's what we're dealing with so New Orleans should be around right here. But what I did was I decided, all right, we're going to go in five mile increments. So this is five miles further down the bridge. Nothing. Ah, now it's, it's hard. It's, it's definitely back there in the distance, but we can see the very tops of the tallest buildings in New Orleans. These are between 400 and 700 feet tall. Um, so the, the lower peaks you're going to see here are going to be the 400 ish foot tall buildings. The tallest are going to be about 700. I then went another five miles. Ah, well, now we can see even more of New Orleans, but we still can't quite see the bottom of any of the buildings, right? All right, now, this is the big difference. Here, you cannot see the levee. Here, you can see the levee, 
and if you get even closer, you can really see the levee. So what you notice as you go through is no New Orleans, New Orleans but vaguely. We're starting to see New Orleans. Now we can really see New Orleans, and now we can see New Orleans. But you can see that there are certain things, smaller buildings especially, that you can't actually see from this far out until you get closer. And then you look around, you're like, oh, okay. Uh, I think one example would be, um, let's see. So I believe these guys over here are on this one, these guys right here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this guy, totally invisible. Um, these guys, I think, yeah, also cannot see these two buildings right here, which is honestly a little surprising. It might just be the, the you know, fidelity of the image. But my point is, yeah, this is five mile increments. And we can see that you, you can literally watch New Orleans come up over the horizon. I did it myself. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why people focus in on this one. I really think it's because of, uh, let me see if I can find it. There's one image they like to use. Um, if I can just find it really quick. I also think Occam's Razor is so funny here. Let's see da, 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 da. the true meaning of level lake ponchar train bridge so the reason they typically use this guy is that there is a picture that frequently gets shared that looks like this there's a few different versions of it it is edited it is it is not real but you can't edit this okay and this goes back you can go back to 2008 Obviously, it's super blurry, but even 2023, when we have high-quality cameras, you cannot see New Orleans. So I wanted to start off the Lake Ponchar train one, just because I think that's kind of fun, but it's also the shortest video he has. So I'm gonna, we're going to dive into a few things. I, we're we're going to be preparing a whole, a whole video on this. My favorite one is the Bible. All of the, the attempts to make it seem like Flat Earth is supported by the Bible. Uh, it's not at all, even remotely, supported by the Bible, but... I also want to check and make sure that you guys are able to there see. There are several photo. Yeah, you guys can see almost everything. Um, let me let me do some. Uh, here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix this. It's part of the frustrating thing that I'm dealing with right now is that Streamlabs is like not making my life easy. So here we go. Is that uh? Still not quite filling it out. That looks decent. I think we're still a little bit of black, though. There we go. That looks like it's covering just about the whole thing. Um, sorry, this got all messed up right before the stream was supposed to go live, so now I'm just trying to make sure we're in the right spot. Um, can I make this guy any bigger, actually? No, I cannot. So I got to do it all manually. Uh, give me one second, guys. Yeah, that should be fine. That should be all right. Cool. But yeah, here we go. Graphs and videos. I would fully believe that Flat Earth is supported by the Quran. That would not surprise me. Of the Louisiana Lake Pontchartrain Causeway and Transmission Lines, showing what globe enthusiasts claim to be visual i'm also gonna make this guy a little smaller and put it up in the corner um whew, and i'll check super chats after this video but yeah so here we go globe enthusiasts we're gonna up his uh his pacing a little bit too because all the guys all of these guys talk oddly slowly there are several photographs and videos of the louisiana lake puncher train causeway and transmission lines showing what globe enthusiasts claim to be visual proof of the curvature of the Earth. In the footage, the bridge... By the way, those things are scary to go over, but also that... that This right here appears to itself be somewhat edited, because they're not that vertical. <laughs> ...claim to be visual proof of the curvature of the Earth. In the footage, the bridge and transmission lines, when viewed from a certain angle and height... Oh, wait, this isn't the photograph. This might actually be the real video. ...to curve downwards as they tend toward the horizon. And this apparent curvature is claimed to be proof of the globe. The first thing to notice when considering this footage 
is that the curvature is not at all uniform, as it must be on a globe. <laughs> Instead, there is almost no apparent curvature in the foreground, and far too much. I, I love this. They really don't understand perspective at all. Like, it's... This is the thing with Flat Earth, is... I, I feel like... I feel like this is one of those things that you have to have just an extraordinary case of Dunning-Kruger to, to be this confident about what you're saying. I, I mean, it, it's perspective. There, the foreground is closer to you. It's going to look flatter. As you get further and further away, there's, it's, it's like these kinds of things are going, like, for example, we can see this with, uh, with the castle in Disney World. The castle looks a lot taller than it is because of the way they designed it for perspective. Also, I don't know why Ella's screaming, but... Oh, Archie wants to go hang out with her. There we go. Go on, guys. There we go. But yeah, so this is just Camera's perspective. He's because There is more on this side. There is just a wider amount of visual information to to perspe yeah, perceive so when you look at this yeah there's as things get further away you can see more things it's just your field of vision goes like this it also goes like this much curvature appearing in the background near the horizon if you trace a circle completing the curve in these pictures it is clear that they cannot be showing the curvature of a globe near well if you traced a larger circle it would be quite obvious Nearly 25,000 miles in circumference. The bridge is- By the way, Erasthenes figured out the Earth was 25,000 miles in circumference around, like, 250 BC. ...itself is just under 24 miles long, and a circle traced over the radically curving section near the horizon would represent a tiny globe, only a few hundred miles in circumference maximum. I mean, how can you not understand... Huh? Just to be clear, I did not watch the videos beforehand, I just grabbed them. Wouldn't really be a reaction video if I had watched them first. So we're just gonna really quick, uh, you know, go create a design. We're just gonna go with, uh, a dock. Uh, no, not what I wanted. Uh, let's do whiteboard. So, we're gonna do a little, uh, little thing here. Ready? If I can find, uh, let's see, we're gonna grow circle. We're going to grab a circle, this black circle. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to show how when you make a circle larger. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. The curve gets harder and harder to see. Fascinating. In fact, if you make it this big, it looks like this entire section up here is flat. But then if we shrink it, Ooh, suddenly that flat section is shrinking. It's getting smaller and smaller. It is getting harder and harder to see. Like, here, let's do this. Ready? The perceived flat section is here. Right? That's the perceived flat section. If we make the circle smaller... The perceived flat section shrinks. This is all that's happening here. If we have one line that, uh, here, let's see. I need a manipulatable line. Let's see. Uh, can I do... I almost wish I had Microsoft Paint right now. <laughs> um... Yeah, it's going to be hard to do this in, in Canva specifically, but that's all that is. The circle is too small. He's drawing an improperly sized circle. <laughs> this shows that the alleged curvature is actually a visual phenomenon and mm, not nope. a physical one. Nope, it shows that you don't understand camera perspective or curvature or geometry. In fact... By placing a series of identical blocks on a flat table and filming from a similar height and angle, the exact same seeming curvature effect can be achieved. 
Visually, it appears as if the blocks toward the back of the table are getting shorter, or that the table itself is curving down. Except that's not the same effect that you're having in the video you're showing. This is them getting uniformly smaller with these remaining on a line. That's not what happens in the other video. In the other video. If you look at it, go back here. Look, these guys, they go up along the horizon. They are not appearing to be in a straight line. The angle he holds it at later maintains them on a straight line on the bottom. The exact same seeming... That's why he can't see it. ...in curvature effect can be achieved. Visually, it appears as if the blocks toward the back of the table are getting shorter, or that the table itself is curving downwards. But in reality, we know the table is per- Once again, the problem here is that he's only accounting for the top line, which by the way, doesn't actually curve. It's a straight line, if you go from here. Like, these don't appear to be uniformly spaced either. Uh, but yeah, so the problem here is that if you look at it, he's not actually looking at the bottom brick. If you do the bottom bricks, they're in a line. His own video shows this, which is not what the other video showed. Perfectly flat, and the blocks are all equal height. Likewise, with the Lake Poncha train transmission towers, visually, it appears as if the towers in the background are getting shorter. Except in this, you can also see... All right, here, I'll make it big again for you guys. In this, you can also see that the bottom bricks remain stagnant. On this, the top and bottom both curve. Where the lake itself is curving downwards but in reality we know the towers are all equal heights and lake pontchartrain is perfectly flat except it's not how do we know that lake pontchartrain is perfectly flat because water does not have the physical capability of showing convexity upon its surface what is he talking about yes it does i mean have you it, it's called cohesion if you take a water droplet and you drop it onto a flat surface, it's round. And, and like, connected, it doesn't totally spread out into singular atomic particles, molecular particles. I, I mean... It... <laughs> also, they don't understand what the term level means. All water, when contained and undisturbed, forms a horizontal level across its surface. And Yes, in, in that it is level on average <laughs> like that's not what level means dude is incapable of maintaining any kind this is part of the reason i never touched flat earth until now is like i'm not a physics guy i'm i'm not a physics person but i'm realizing now that there's no actual physics involved here these are things that can be proven with basic geometry and of curvature or height differentials whether in a because if you look at it the assumption being made is that this and this are level to one another. And that's not how it works. <laughs> it is incapable of maintaining any kind of curvature or height differential. Like, this is quite literally what it looks like, but if you zoom this in on a super, super micro scale, it's going to look like the top one. Whether in a beaker, bottle, or bathtub, a pool, lake, or an ocean, the natural physics of water remain the same. Globe apologists will claim the mythical force of globe apologists. The natural physics of water remain the same. I, I ju <laughs> I, I the, the thing that's so frustrating about it is that they'll say stuff like this, and then you'll show them a photograph from from much higher up, where you can see a lot more. And you can clearly see the curvature, and then they say it's CGI. It's just... Globe apologists will claim the mythical force of gravity somehow causes lakes and oceans to bend in conformity with their fantastical ball earth. But, but that's not what they argue at all. It's that we're on a ball, so the water is, is level. Because it's on a ball. It doesn't mean flat. Flat and level don't mean the same thing somehow causes lakes and oceans to bend in conformity with their fantastical ball earth. But, conveniently, of course, only at a scale too large for them to recreate. It... well, yeah. Obviously. How could you possibly recreate the entire earth? In reality, no matter what the scale, all contained, undisturbed bodies of water are demonstrably flat. Except... 
They're not. <laughs> sea level's relatively, you know, flat. In that it's the distance between the level of the ocean and the level of what's on land. <laughs> like, I mean, here's the thing. This is not... This is this is not what he's describing. This is the Panama Canal. I mean, this is a lake. It's higher. It's an it's an above sea level lake. Of course, it's not level. And of course, these two things on opposite sides would be relatively level with one another, including the twenty four mile expanse of Lake Pontchartrain. This becomes obvious. By the way, the engineering of the bridge itself proves that the Earth is round. Like, the engineering of the bridge. Obvious when viewed at altitude, as the entire lake and causeway can be seen with a perfectly flat horizon above them. With the use of high-altitude balloons, it becomes even more obvious, as they reach heights of over 120,000 feet, capable of seeing for hundreds of miles in all directions. And you can see the curve here. <laughs> this is the best part, is if you were to actually take a level and just go across, this would not be flat. This is a curve. This is an obvious curve, in fact. This is the same thing I described earlier. If you take a circle, we're gonna go, we're gonna go back to the whiteboard here. We're gonna zoom way out, right? Ready? Zoom way out. And we're gonna make a really big circle. Okay, this is a scale of, this will be at the scale of uh, 1 to 100. So this is 1%, we're zoomed out to 1%. We're now going to zoom in. By the way, so we've zoomed in now to 10%. This is 10% of the scale of the circle. That's not even what we're seeing here. This is this is less than 10% of the circle. Right? So let's keep zooming in. Here we are at about 25%. Right? We starting to see how it's starting to look pretty damn flat. Let's go up to Where's 100%? So here's here's about 100. It's about a hundred percent zoom. Notice anything? Let's go up a little closer. Let's get up to uh here's five hundred percent. Hmm. At five so interesting. Let's see, let's uh let's grab this. What do we got? Huh. It's very hard to get this finely rotated to the angle I'm going for, but interesting. At this zoom level, one degree tilts it pretty considerably, but you can see that one degree tilt either direction touches it to one part of the circle. That is because you are so close to the planet that you're only seeing a tiny fraction of it. Ironically, when confronted with these flat horizons, Globe Earth apologists use the exact opposite excuse. It's not a flat horizon. Use, and no matter your altitude, always claim you simply aren't high enough to see. You're not high enough. You need to be literally like thousands of miles away from Earth to be far enough away to see the curve easily. The curvature. In other words, they claim at ground level, the Lake Pontchartrain bridge and transmission towers are bending around the physical curvature of their globe just two dozen miles away. Yeah, as I, as I showed at the beginning of this podcast, that is precisely what is going on. But at high altitudes, where we can see for- Once again, perspective issue. First of all, this picture right here on the bottom, unsourced. To me, this actually looks like it's probably an artist uh, depiction. What do we have here? First of all, these both show curve, right? Angle. Perspective. Basic terms you should have learned in art class in middle school. Hundreds of miles in all directions. That 
is somehow not high or far enough to If you view something from this angle, head on, you're gonna see it go over the curve. If you view it from up higher looking down, you're not gonna see it go over the curve until you get much further away. This, he's not even, con he keeps saying that these are like contradictory ideas because he doesn't get what perspective is. To see the curve. Another common question posed by global. Oh, here Earthers we go. Is, this took us right into the next one. If the Earth is flat, then why are all the other planets round? To begin with, <laughs> the Earth is a plane, not a planet. And by simply adding. They also do this all the time, where they, they think that, like. They think that they've discovered some super cool hidden meaning behind words. And in reality, they just didn't bother to look into the etymology. Adding a T on the end. Modern astronomers have linguistically transformed our Earth plane into a globe spun around the sun. N nope. It's not what planet means. Planet and plane do not mean the same thing. The word round is also deceiving. Uh, yeah, here we go. It's once again. <laughs> once again, it's etymology. Because most flat earthers would agree that the Earth is round like a coin, just not round like a ball. When making this argument online, Globe Earthers will often present a picture of the traditional heliocentric model with eight spherical planets and a flat Earth among them floating in space. This entire concept is a straw man, however, as no flat Earthers believe in a flat planet floating in space third from the sun in a heliocentric solar system. In NASA's many CGI depictions, the planets do indeed appear spherical, but when looking- I, I love how they just call anything they want CGI at them for yourself through a telescope or super zoom camera it is certainly contestable whether or not the planets are spherical no it's not <laughs> it's not contestable we can we have flown things to these planets we know they're around <laughs> every time i have personally observed the planets they look like small relatively flat round lights and nothing like huge spherical terra firma worlds Interestingly enough, you may be surprised to find out that Eric Dubé does not have a degree in astronomy or any formal training. Only in NASA and other official space agency footage do the planets appear like three-dimensional globular worlds. In amateur footage, they look more like two-dimensional lights. Sim wait, wait, wait. With the super high-tech, very expensive equipment NASA has, things look different than through your consumer-grade telescope? <gasps> oh my god, they've proven it! Similar to all the other stars. In fact, before they were called planets, the ancients referred to them as wandering stars. Because That's what planet means! <laughs> no, the Greeks did not refer to them as wandering stars. They referred to them as planets, which means wanderer. Because they only differed from the other fixed stars in their relative motions. They each have their own unique appearance, but none of them look like spherical worlds. Even Saturn, which appears more like a circular luminary with a halo of light around it. Hmm, why might that be? Ultimately, however, it is completely irrelevant what shape the other planets are when looking to prove the shape of the Earth. Modern astronomers constantly repeat this red herring that I have dubbed the appeal to the sky fallacy. Imagine inviting a contractor over to your house to measure the dimensions of your floor, and instead, they immediately get out their tape measure and start measuring all the recessed lights in the ceiling. This is exactly what globe earthers are doing by claiming to provide scientific proof for the shape of the earth under our feet by looking at lights in the sky over our head. They also do this, where they'll take, like, individual arguments made, like, points, not even arguments, and they'll be like, well, you know, this point you've made is your entire argument, and now I'm going to debunk it. He just made up a fallacy, meanwhile he's sitting here throwing straw mans around. Like magicians distracting you with one hand while fooling you with the other. This, like, if, if the only thing were people saying, well, all the other planets are round, why is ours flat? Then he might have a point, maybe. But that's not what everybody's saying. They're saying, hey... We have observed these spherical, these sphere-ish, uh, you know, heavenly bodies. Why are all of them round if ours is flat? A and there's no answer for that. Because here's the thing. What he's done is he's now completely ignored the fact that we have satellite images of these planets. 
taken from both sides of these planets. We know they're around. We have the information. We have the evidence. But what he's done is he's totally thrown that out. He's pretended that it's solely that we figure this out solely by looking up through a telescope. No, that's not how this works. And this is why I do genuinely think that for the most part, Flat Earth is a simple issue of intelligence. I mean, there's like maturity should play a role too. I can understand how somebody, I, I guess I should say this. It's, it's a lack of education, but then there's also the aspect of lack of intelligence because you have, you can, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't always make a drink. You know, I can show somebody mathematical proof because there is mathematical proof, right? I mean, there's a, uh, what's the one where it's, um, earth is level. Let's look at the, uh, I'm trying to find the specific, um, picture, but there is, a uh, there's a great one where I'm going to try and find it. We'll have it for the video we're doing, but, uh, there's a video where these guys took two, uh, where they took a level, just a straight, straight up level, two sticks of the same height stuck the level across it, lined it up with the horizon, you can clearly see that the horizon is curved. Because on the one stick, what they did was the sticks are the same height, the same height above sea level. Stick on the left, at the horizon. Stick on the right, below the horizon. It is easily provable. All you actually need is a mountain and a flat horizon. If you can find a mountain that overlooks an ocean, you can prove the Earth is round. Globe apologists, when asked for empirical, measurable proof of the shape of the Earth beneath their feet, invariably, inevitably, instead, turn their noses up to the sky and start talking about the shape of things up there. But e Except that's not the case at all. Now he's, now he's just totally outright rejected... All of the people who have gone and done this with math. There are so many anti-flat earth arguments that do not in any way boil down to, well, look up. Even if all the other planets really were spheres, what on earth does that have to do with the shape of the earth? Well, it would be really weird for every other planet in the universe to be a sphere and ours to be a flat plane. That's a, that's the question at hand. Considering this guy has an Occam's razor argument, I am really shocked. It was not the light bridge test. I do have that one pulled up. <laughs> Glow birthers often. Here, you know what? We'll do we'll do it. We'll do it right here. Ready? Because it just switched videos again. So what did I have? I had uh, I will close these two, and we will close. Oh, we're gonna move over here. We're gonna go to no. It wasn't the maps one. It was um. I mean, the maps one did prove it as well, but that's not what I was going for. Um, we wanted, here we go. Flat Earth debunks, King's Mirror challenges Flat Earthers. Flat Earther accidentally proves the Earth is round. Here we go. This is a Flat Earther. This is not a, this is not a Glober like me. You may recognize this one. We have one. a backup experiment. If you're seeing through this hole, through the next hole. By the way, the context for this is that they spent a lot of money on an instrument that was supposed to help them calculate that the Earth was flat, and it showed them the Earth was round, so they set up this much more basic experiment. And seeing the light at the backboard, or at 17 feet off the water, the Earth is flat. If he's holding it up at 23 feet high and we're seeing the light, well, that's because the Earth's curved. So I, I should only be able to see it when it's at 17 feet. Okay, go ahead and drive down there, Enrique. You're gonna hold the light there? Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I, you know, it's his, um, there's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light up, way above your head. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. Done. Your Lake Ponchart train argument is gone, Eric. It's over. It's done. Uh, what else do we have?
Why can't everyone see Mount Everest on a flat Earth? This is also a good question. I'm curious what his answer is. Ask, if the Earth is flat, then why can't people from anywhere in the world zoom with a telescope and see Mount Everest? To begin with, this question presupposes the errant assumption that we can see indefinitely far with the use of a telescope. Wait, 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 wait. We can see stars with a telescope, but we can't see Mount Everest. This idea has been indoctrinated into people due to modern astronomers claiming that the stars and planets shown through their telescopes are millions and billions and trillions of miles away. I'm very interested to see if he at any point tells us exactly how far away he thinks they are. Making many people assume that a telescope pointed horizontally should also be able to see equally far, or at least as far as Mount Everest. In reality, however, this guy really thinks that a Nikon P100 with 125 times zoom it couldn't possibly see Everest if it were I I just <sighs> who also I don't believe Galileo said that the stars were gaseous bodies in outer space I'm pretty sure he didn't say that. But here's what gets me is like if you were to take a telescope, you, you they have all these pictures, right? That are taken from way up high in the sky. And you can see for miles, th thousands of miles. And yet he's saying you can't I mean, let's, let's see. Let's do the, uh, let's do the math. Ready? Let's go, uh, we will go to maps.com. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab just Philly. Just Center City Philly. And I'm going to go find Mount Everest. It's going to be over here in Nepal. Right? Or is it Tibet? Is Tibet even on the map anymore? Um, where is Everest? Yeah, we'll just do this. Matt Everest. Ah, I was close. All right. So, 7,000 miles, right? It is a 7,000 mile trip. We should be able to see this with the telescope technology that we have. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just stunning. Also, by the way, I, I need to point out because it'll come up in the video, but one of the original flat earth maps, and if you look at most flat earth maps, this 7,000 miles should be considerably shorter than, uh, than, than seven, basically than 7,000 miles. Like that 7,000 mile arc and this 5,000 mile arc if you look at a flat earth map this is a shorter journey than this despite the fact that this is about 5,000 miles a little over 5,000 miles from Tasmania to uh to is that Chile yeah Chile whereas up here this is 7,000 miles on a flat earth map this is a shorter journey it's impossible but the idea that you couldn't see Mount Everest from Philadelphia, let alone Mount Everest from Turkmenistan. I mean, theoretically, if the Earth is flat, you should be able to see Mount Everest from, like, here. <laughs> Let's see, where do we have a... Looks like we have a highway here. Ready? We have a highway right here. Nope, it's... Okay. Really? Where's the nearest place I can put a Street View dude down? Ah. Okay, here. Uh, we'll just grab a random spot in the foothills. Now let's look east. Hmm, interesting. No Mount Everest. Let's grab uh, maybe something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more isolated. Here we go. Nice little isolated uh, stretch of road. Out in the country. Ooh, interesting. I don't even see the Himalayas at all. Fascinating. They're just invisible, even though they, they really should just be right there. 
I mean, you know, even a telescope, I mean, let's see, what's I, where have we got Everest again? Everest is right there. Let's see, what's I, uh, what's a, that's 108 miles. What's the closest we can get to Everest on Street View? Looks like, uh, in terms of closest we can get, where we'll actually be able to see the mountain. Okay, that's weird. That was weird. Now I'm having, like, weird glitches. Okay. Um, let's go maybe down here. All right, we're in a village again. You can see some of the peaks, but I don't see Everest. Uh, it's just, it's unbelievable, man. As you can test for yourself, using a telescope or camera with just 100 or 200 times zoom capability, the stars and planets are not nearly that far away and can be zoomed into incredible detail beyond what would be possible of... How far away? Something so absurdly distant. Furthermore, when looking horizontally across the Earth, there are a number of visibility and atmospheric limitations present that don't factor when looking upwards towards the stars. Namely, perspective and convergence, angular resolution- Oh, so now he knows about perspective. ...and the vanishing point, as well as pollution, haze, humidity, fog, mist, and more. Most people asking about seeing Mount Everest through a telescope have never actually experimented with one themselves, or else would already know that visibility- Because <laughs> all telescopes have a limited range. Uh, yeah, in terms of how clear something will be, it should still be visible. Even if you could see that far, your view will be obstructed by atmospheric distortion, weather, and pollution. You can do the opposite, and you can say, why can't I see uh, the Empire State Building from Mount Everest? <laughs> it gets progressively more distorted. Like, even, you can't even see Shanghai from Mount Everest the further you zoom, until nothing can be discernibly resolved. There are also, of course, hills, mountains, buildings, trees, and innumerable other objects in the way, obstructing any possible view to Mount Everest. If you stand on the beach, a plain, or prairie, you will find the horizon extends about three to six miles around you, depending on the weather and your eyesight. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no. The range of the human eye, our field of vision, is from 110 to 1 degree, and the smallest angle under which an object can still be seen is 1 60th of 1 degree, so that when an object is 3,000 times its own diameter away from an observer, it will cease to be visible. So for example, He can understand all of this, but he cannot fathom a curve. Like... The furthest distance at which one can see a one inch diameter penny is 3,000 inches, or 250 feet. With the aid of the best telescopes on the clearest days, we can resolve objects a few hundred times smaller and or further away, but anything on the scale of seeing Everest from anywhere on Earth is simply not possible. He's got a lot of opinions that have nothing to do with facts. Anyway, let me uh, take a look through the, uh, the super chats, because I know there were several. Um, although it looks like I've lost a few of them in the regular chat, so let me check in here. Um, 39 minutes, 40 minutes, okay, here we go. Kellen said, check previous super chat. But there is no previous super chat. Yeah, this is the first super chat I see from you, Kellen. Uh, the other one might be... Yeah, the last one I have from you is from the other day. Um... If you want to shoot me a message on Discord, I can check it. Uh, let's see. Kellen said milk for uh, 323. So maybe that was the super chat he was talking about. Um, Gom said, how dare you be late? I want my money back now. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Trash Panda said, Earth is in fact a milk-shaped. Milk -shaped. Panda has spoken. I would believe it. I I'd go with milk earth. Milk earth would go hard. Uh, Donkey Man USA said, clearly Terry Pratchett had it right. Earth is dick shaped, disc shaped. 
supported by four elephants standing on a giant space turtle. There are actually people who believe that. Do not get ahead of me. Um, Coke Dream said, The Earth is a bowl, the ocean is the milk, and we are the cinnamon toast crunch. I'll take it. I will take it. Flat Earth is supported by the Quran. Yeah, I would believe that. You think cameras exist? Sheeple, Jorah the Explorer says. <laughs> Kellen said, Why are you hurting my navigation-loving soul with this? This pains me. It pains me too. Uh, totally not. James said, can we redo the healing, Aiden? Hmm, I'm wanted in. I don't know what that means. Donkey Man USA says, my great grandparents legitimately believed in flat earth because the four corners of the earth fit in the Bible. It was surreal. Yeah, there's a lot of that too. Like people being like, oh, well, the Bible says, in fact, that's going to be a whole segment of the video that's coming out next Friday. Um, is we're just going to go through all of the, you know, biblical flat earth proofs. And basically be like, no, no, no. I went through him earlier. Actually, the guy who had his had had his chapters and verses mislabeled anyway. Um, like he he had stuff like he had something labeled as like Isaiah fifty eight, but it was actually Isaiah forty eight. There were three or four of them. It was actually kind of mind boggling how often he got it wrong. Um, what else do we have though? We had uh, flat Earth FAQ. That's the full video book um 200 proofs earth is not a spinning ball this one doesn't have chapters though um cognitive dissonance oh boy this is this is funny let's let's see what we got come on cognitive dissonance is the psychological tension that occurs when holding two contradictory beliefs Why simultaneously is... My computer is lagging aggressively today. What is going on? Sorry, I'm just taking a look. Um, what is using up all the CPU right now? Weird. Nothing. Such as loving cows, but also loving hamburgers. The discomfort experienced when holding two incompatible cognitions isn't necessarily a also, just to respond to something, Cheryl, this is part of my process for, for researching. This allows me to go through a lot of the arguments and look, you know, look at what people are saying. I, uh, and then kind of, I can, oh boy. Fuck. <laughs> you can't just knock over walls, dude. But yeah, this is kind of part of the research process for me. I get to go through, I get to look at everything, and then I can revisit it later. So that's kind of what I'm doing. A bad thing, and in fact, can act as a catalyst, prompting positive changes. It becomes back to incompatible cognition. Let's, uh, he's talking too slow again, so let's up that. Let's, uh, uh, his video is in 720? Cognitive dissonance is the psychological tension that occurs when holding two contradictory beliefs simultaneously, such as loving cows, but also loving hamburgers. The discomfort experienced when holding two incompatible- That's not cognitive dissonance. Like, that's not what cognitive dissonance means. Cognitive dissonance is when you have two things that can't reconcile and you believe them both. I can both think cows are adorable- and I can like being around cows when they're alive. And I can also like to eat beef. This is not cognitive dissonance because I'm not saying, oh, well, I would never hurt a cow and then eating beef. I fully recognize that if it was absolutely necessary, I would be willing to kill a cow and eat it. Me saying I could never do that and then eating meat, well, that's a little bit different. Even then, it's not necessarily cognitive dissonance. It's just you saying, well, I like the meat and I understand that the cow has to die. I just don't want to be the one to kill it. Like, th he doesn't even understand what, co what cognitive dissonance is. Cognitive dissonance is, uh, God, I mean, I'm trying to think of a good example for this. Cognitive dissonance is, um, you know, being able to acknowledge that physics is a science and then insisting the earth is flat. That's cognitive dissonance. Double cognitions isn't necessarily a bad thing, and in fact, can act as a catalyst, prompting positive changes. 
It becomes problematic, however, when people experiencing cognitive dissonance instead display denial, angst, anger, incredulity, or exasperation. This is, by the way, every flat earther. Those suffering from crippling cognitive dissonance will often blame other people or outside factors. I don't know, like blaming NASA or the Jews or Freemasons or literally anybody for hiding that the Earth is flat for some reason. What the? The, the cognitive dissonance is him saying all of this and not realizing that he's describing his own cognitive dissonance. Avoid certain subjects and rationalize poor decisions. The psychological tension of cognitive dissonance can be relieved, though. There, yes, thank you, Tay. Cognitive dissonance is saying you don't believe in cows and eating steak for dinner. Once the seemingly contradictory cognitions find a way to sensibly coexist. If you love cows, but also love hamburgers, for example, you might try cutting down your consumption, or switch to some of the many vegan hamburger options. Yeah, this guy has no clue what he's talking about. And this is again why I say it all comes down to a lack of intelligence. It's a bunch of people who aren't very bright, who think that they're very smart. This guy is very unintelligent. Probably one of the dumbest people you'll ever encounter. If you were to encounter him out in public. But he's gonna think he's got it all figured out. It's the same as the Tartaria stuff. Because they don't have the full context and they refuse to go and look for it, they think that they've stumbled upon some great secret. In reality, all of the information is out there and they're just not aware of it. Where the lack of intelligence comes in is that an intelligent person who has been raised to believe the earth is flat. If you present an intelligent person with all of the mathematical proof, all of the images, everything, and you say, here is all of the evidence that you are wrong, an intelligent person will be able to say, okay, sure, I see now that I was wrong and I understand why. I will change my worldview. A non-intelligent person is going to insist that you're lying to them and that, you know, you are brainwashed and they will, like, this is my favorite thing. If you say, well, the Earth isn't flat, here's my mathematical reasoning, they'll say you were brainwashed by NASA. Like, he is describing flat Earther behavior. Aristotle said, nothing is more challenging than the ability to study, debate. <laughs> Tay said, my local lodge at a pancake breakfast that I got invited to. And I gotta say, when you aren't doing human sacrifice or making bricks, you make a mean breakfast. <laughs> exactly. And think through a concept without immediately accepting or no creeper weirdo i know i know that's vaguely political but that it like literally the the communists in russia in the 1920s you know <laughs> if we believe hard enough the crops will grow we don't need those kulaks who know how, how to do it like we don't need help or rejecting it it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it yeah it is I can entertain Flat Earth. I'm not rejecting Flat Earth because I can't comprehend it. I'm rejecting it because it's stupid. And F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote that the truest sign of intelligence is the ability to entertain two contradictory ideas simultaneously. In other words... That's not... That's just F. Scott Fitzgerald paraphrasing Aristotle. The ability to ponder opposite ideas without... It actually might be the other way around. ...experiencing crippling cognitive dissonance is the mark of a balanced mind. The capacity to consider contradictory cognitions without immediately accepting or rejecting one of them is one of the surest signs of intelligence. Every so, Steve, I see what you're saying with you're not, you're, you're conflating intelligence and wisdom. Not, I, I would disagree because wisdom, wisdom is how you use your knowledge. Wisdom is knowing what the truth is. Wisdom is understanding how, how it interacts. Somebody might, you know, know that, l let me give you an example in, uh, like, in, um, in the way FBI handles, uh, serial killers. The FBI knows that, let's call him John Smith, is murdering people. The FBI also knows that as soon as John Smith knows the FBI is on to him, he's gonna more, he he's gonna go ballistic, he's gonna murder more people. So, the FBI is confronted with two choices. They can either go public and tell everybody, hey, be on the lookout, there's a serial killer named John Smith. This, of course, would risk more deaths. Or they can do the wise thing 
and wait until they know they can get him to release the information. Now, of course, there's a lot of other nuance that goes in and why, how they make the decisions they do, but that's the basics of it. I would say that a wise person can be, you can be unintelligent and have the wisdom to know that the earth is round. You can also be unintelligent and lack the wisdom to know that the earth is round. Um, what you can't be is intelligent and wise and think that the earth is flat. Probably wasn't the best way to, to describe that, but that's where I'm coming at it from. Every issue has at least two sides, often three or more. And if you- Oh, sick, Bushman. ...have only researched or thought about one side of a subject without ever giving due diligence to- Yeah, I should have gone with that a little bit, little bit, Lita. Perfect. Perfect. Knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. ...differing perspectives. That is nothing but willful ignorance. Without often three or more. And if you have only researched or thought about one side of a subject without ever giving due diligence to differing perspectives, that is nothing but willful ignorance. They say this despite the fact that I guarantee you this guy has never actually read a, a single article explaining why the earth is round. Those who are able to refrain from judgment long enough to genuinely research and weigh the evidence from all sides of a given issue are the most likely to arrive at truth. Mm -hmm. For a truly insightful, concrete case study in cognitive dissonance, I recommend delving deep into the subject of cosmology. Consider this. We have been taught that we live on a giant sphere, floating in space, tilting on its vertical axis, wobbling through a procession, and spinning through the seasons. Yes. This spinning ball Earth reaches speeds of over a thousand miles per hour at the equator, sure. and causes an optical illusion of the sun, moon, and stars revolving over and around us. So Occam's razor would be that it's not an illusion that we're turning. The spinning ball Earth also revolves 67,000 miles per hour around the sun, while the whole solar system spirals 500,000 miles per hour through the Milky Way. And the entire Milky Way galaxy shoots off millions of more miles per hour from a creationary explosion 14.7 billion years ago. Okay. These astronomical assumptions are taught as gospel truths, while differing perspectives are not only not considered, they are condemned. So maybe we have found the nugget. Maybe this is the nugget. That these things are taught frequently as absolute truth, when in reality they're theory. Now, with things like gravity, they might as well be one and the same. He's now taking that and applying it to something that is just beyond the pale, you know? The Earth is round. We know that. It's and not as Einstein. We've proven it. There are multiple proofs. You can prove it geometrically. You can prove it photographically. You can prove it astronomically. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can prove the Earth is flat in... You can prove it meteorologically. Um, you can prove it topographically. There... No matter what way you slice it, no matter what you try and use to prove the shape of the earth, it's going to come out round every time. And said, condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. So let's attempt an investigation without condemnation, denial, or ridicule. And By the way, what he's putting up right now, uh, it looks like he actually does not... The line is not on the horizon. That line is... The horizon is here. The line is up here. He just placed it completely arbitrarily. And you'll notice, it, it could be that there's mountains in the distance, but if you'll notice, the horizon over here is very clearly closer to the line than it is over here. This, if we look, this is one full mouse, almost two full mice. I can only get the one full mouse in here on this side. Try to examine a different perspective, your own common sense, everyday experience of the world. Which would suggest it's round. First. Just sit motionless for a moment, and feel the absolute stillness of the earth under your feet. Scale. <laughs> like, you could be standing in, I, I mean, here, let me put it this way. When you're on a train, you don't feel the train moving. You might feel it rumbling, but you don't feel it moving. If you were to put somebody into a train, or an airplane, or even a car, and black out all the windows, they would only vaguely 
be able to tell that they're moving, if at all. And it, and the only real reason is that you're going at an inconsistent speed. If you were to put somebody in a car at 50 miles an hour on a straight road, totally flat, black out all the windows and just have it drive, they would not be able to tell you how far they went. They would not be able to even tell you if they were moving. In fact, if you were to put a car to 50 miles an hour and then decrease it very, very, very slowly down to zero, they would not be able to tell that they have stopped. Like, <laughs> these are just simple matters of physics. If your body is moving at a certain speed, everything in your body is moving at that speed. Now, imagine that the Earth under your feet is actually moving at millions of miles per hour in multiple different directions simultaneously. Well, it's not. It's moving at millions of miles an hour in one direction. It's moving at thousands of miles an hour in another direction. And it's such a big ball that we can't perceive it. These are two opposing ideas, two contradictory cognitions, but you can consider them both without choosing between them. Because one is also, I would argue that in this video, you actually can, in fact, see the curve. Your everyday experience of the world, and one one is what we are all taught in school. Now look up to the sun, moon, or stars, and watch them slowly revolving over and around you as you sit stationary beneath them. Uh, the, you know what? It's not even a lack of intelligence. It's a total lack of object permanence. Next, try to imagine instead that the luminaries above are actually more or less motionless, but it is you yourself that are slowly revolving under and around the sun, moon, and stars. Yeah, both of those feel pretty possible. Again, these are two opposite ideas that cannot technically both be true, but we can at least consider both perspectives without immediately accepting one and rejecting the other. Okay, well, I'm gonna accept that the because Earth one is just came up over one horizon and then went down over another in what is very clearly an arc and not a circle your everyday experience of the world, and one is what we are all taught in school. Looking up at the sun and moon, notice how they appear almost exactly the same size and distance. They're- one is a lot closer but a lot smaller. Oh my god. Looking up at the sun and moon, notice how they appear almost exactly the same size and distance, and follow similar paths over and around the earth. Now imagine instead, that the sun is 400 times larger than the moon, 400 times farther away, and that they trace very different paths, the moon revolving around the earth, while the earth and moon revolve around the sun. Again, one is your common sense everyday experience. Well, no. The moon revolves around the earth, and the earth revolves around the sun. The moon does not revolve around the sun. It does in the sense that it's revolving around the earth, which is leading it to revolve around the sun. But these are important distinctions. ...experience of the world. And one is what we are all taught in school. Wait, 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 Is your common around the earth, while the earth and moon revolve around the sun. Again, one is your common sense everyday experience of the world, and one is what we are all taught in school. Paths over and around the earth, how they appear almost exactly the same size and distance, and follow similar paths over and around the earth. Now imagine instead that the sun is 400 times larger than the moon, 400 times farther away, and that they trace very different paths. I don't know that you could even have a debate with a guy like this. There's just no... There, there's nothing up here. Nobody's home. I mean, you can look up in the sky for yourself and tell that the moon and the sun clearly draw different paths. The moon will be in a considerably different position each night compared to the sun. Every day, the sun will appear if you're going from December towards June. In the Northern Hemisphere, every day, the sun's arc will get a little closer to the equator. And we'll do that until, uh, I think, June 21st. And then after June 21st, the sun will, every day, arc a little bit further from the, from the zenith of the sky. On June 31st, at the equator, the sun is going to be directly overhead. Sorry, not at... Am I getting my astronomy wrong? I might be. Anyway, my point... My point... <laughs> is that... Where the moon is and where the sun is... Are clearly not linked. 
The sun has a static position in the sky that changes a slight bit every day. The moon, on the other hand, will be in a significantly different position every day and every night. Um, again, relative to how much the sun moves. Moon revolving around the earth, while the earth and moon revolve around the sun. Again, one is your common sense, everyday experience of the world, and one is what we are all taught in school. The next time you go to the beach, climb a mountain, or ride in a plane, take notice of the horizon. It's curved! It's curved! Also, I will say, I don't think this is a real video. And how it is always horizontal, perfectly flat, 360 degrees around. Or at least if it is, that is much higher than any plane I've ever been in. And rising to your eye level, no matter the altitude. Then, try to imagine an altitude at which the horizon falls far below your- I, I mean, it's just- uncanny that this guy is look is assuming this is real it's uncanny that this guy is watching this and not seeing the curvature then try to imagine an altitude at which the horizon falls far below your line of sight imagine looking out your plane window and seeing a curved hump of horizon so low you have to be pressed to the glass looking down to even see it as high as you will ever experience or amateur what's my like my star sign i'm a scorpio balloons can capture the horizon always rises to eye level and remains flat 300 except it doesn't <laughs> 60 degrees around but we can easily imagine otherwise because we have seen images of outer space showing a spherical earth everyone on earth regardless of what they believe about reality is able to understand both of these opposing perspectives without experiencing any kind of cognitive dissonance because one is their everyday experience of the world and one is what they have been taught about the world no, it's because one is their just straight up visual experience of the world, and the other is reality. <laughs> I, the ability to comprehend that there are things you can't see is apparently totally lacking for this guy. Like, it's not cognitive dissonance to see, oh, from my perspective, the Earth appears to be flat. And to know, alternatively, that the Earth is not flat. That's not cognitive dissonance. <laughs> At all. Cognitive dissonance is being shown mountains of evidence that the Earth is round and insisting it's flat. What happens, though, when people who have been taught one thing for their entire lives are- This guy has done far too much work to just be rage baiting. Then told what they were taught is wrong. What happens when they are told that their common sense was correct, and that their everyday experience was reality? What happens when tens of millions of people start- I mean, it's just- it's uncanny. What are we dealing with here, about a mouse? A little one over? Thing for their entire lives, are then told what they were taught is wrong. What happens when they are told that their common sense was correct? Watch, see? Right here. The distance is expanded. At the beginning of the video, between the horizon and the line is slightly more than my mouse pointer. Wrong. Watch. What happens when they are told you that their common sense You can watch it fall away further and correct. further. It's now almost two full mice. This guy's own video is disproving him. And that their everyday experience was reality. What happens when tens of millions of people start doing personal experiments, collecting empirical evidence, and showing demonstrable proofs against what they were taught in school? Would you too do your due diligence in researching different perspectives? Or would you just double down with denial and decide you already knew the truth? Do you mean like what you're doing? There has been a recent resurgence in the subject of cosmology for just this very reason. Tens of millions have realized that what we were taught to imagine about reality is just one possible perspective. I mean, it's more that the government gave everybody a really big reason to not trust them in the last few years. Actually, multiple really big reasons to not trust them in the last few years. Like... I mean, you don't even have to believe that certain things were, you know... an overt conspiracy to look at uh, certain things that happened in the last few years and go, really? They lied about that? 
I mean, they've been doing it for years. It's not just in the last few. To be very clear, I don't think that the virus was a, a psyop or something that was, you know, engineered so that they could implant stuff into us. I don't believe any of that. I just remember how cagey the government was about certain details. Um, like there, there were certain things where the, I here I, I I'll just I'll just come out and say exactly what I'm talking about. I remember being told over and over again by friends, by the media, by politicians, that that virus did not come from a lab. Four years later, they admit it came from a lab. It was obvious it came from a lab the whole time. We all knew it came from a lab. And they insisted it was bat soup. Bat soup from the wet market right outside of the lab. It was the laziest lie I've ever seen. Like, we knew, we all knew in our heart of hearts what was going on there. But they wanted to avoid it being, you know, a, they, they want, I don't, I don't even know why they did it. Like to say, hey, it came from a lab, but we were funding that lab. What are you worried about, racism? No, they were worried about the fact that it could all be tied back to them. They needed everybody to be panicked and to forget about it before they all went back and realized, oh, wait a second, this was you. <sighs> yeah, exactly, the, the Pelosi, everything's fine, come party in Chinatown thing. It was just, that whole thing was, and here's the problem, is like, it wasn't nearly as big a lie as a lot of people think. Most of what happened during that period was people legitimately trying to respond to something that was brand new to the world. But because of how they went about it, now nobody trusts the government about anything health related. I know I sure as hell don't. You know, it's I, I it's so frustrating the way everything works, but here. So that's the cosmological cognitive dissonance. Let's uh let's take a look at some other aspects. Uh Eric, do you, does he hit a uh, flat earth bible? Does he have one on this? When globe heads think outside the ball. Oh boy. Um Neil deGrasse Tyson on Eric DeBay and the flat earth. All right, let's take a look at that. That's why I said Eric DeBay seems to be like a big deal. Um, let's see. I'm guessing this one, the true meaning of level, given the, uh, artwork is probably the one we're looking at. Ah, oh, wait, here we go. Here's an interest. I'm curious about this one, actually. Why isn't Polaris visible? The North Star. Globe Earthers are taught that the reason the North Pole Star cannot be seen from southern locations like Australia or New Zealand is because it is hidden behind the supposed curvature of their globular Earth. Similar to what is taught about boats disappearing beyond the horizon, they claim these boats and the Pole Star are disappearing behind the physical curvature of a globe. I do think that's an interesting one, Samantha Warren. Um, I do remember the Hong Kong protests. I was uh, a president of a young American... Uh, I was president of the Penn State chapter of Young Americans for Liberty at the time. And that was something we were talking about a lot. Um, I I mean, I could kind of see it, but I do also think, man, I'm just, I, it's it's really occurring to me how weird that year of my life was. Like, every time I try to think about senior year of college, I'm like, oh yeah, and that happened, and that happened, and that happened, and that happened. Um, so, I could see that as being a possibility. I feel like with in the case of China, I feel like China would be a lot more likely to tell everybody there's a virus than to actually release a virus. You know? And insist if the- If it were going to be on purpose. Earth was truly a stationary plane, that Australians should have no trouble viewing Polaris. The fact of the matter is that all stars positioned Globular north is of a, a weird word. I don't like it. ...on traveler gradually decline overhead the farther the observer travels southwards. 
just as all stars positioned south of a northbound traveler gradually decline overhead the farther the observer travels northwards. Dude, you're so close. Wait, hang on. This is funny. This is actually really funny. Listen to this. A stationary plane that Australians should have no trouble viewing Polaris. The fact of the matter is that all stars positioned north of a southbound traveler gradually decline overhead the farther the observer travels southwards, just as all stars positioned south of a northbound traveler gradually decline overhead the farther the observer travels northwards. Likewise, all stars located north of a northbound traveler gradually rise overhead the farther the observer travels northwards, while all stars located south of a southbound traveler gradually rise overhead the farther the observer travels southwards. This phenomenon has absolutely nothing to do with the supposed curvature of a globe, and- I, uh, Something has to be curved in order for this to make sense. Something has to be curved. Otherwise, it makes no sense at all. Like, the sky has to be curved. Because if it's all up here, it's not really going to matter. It's still going to be up here, even from here. It will still be up, like... If the star is here, somebody here will still see it. It'll just be lower in the sky than somebody right here. The question was, why can't you see it from Australia, not why is it lower in the sky? And everything to do with the law of perspective, which dictates that the angle and height at which an object is seen diminishes the farther one recedes from the object, oh until God. at a certain point, the line of sight and the seemingly uprising surface of the Earth converges to a vanishing point, in this case, the horizon line, beyond which the object becomes invisible. Thomas Winship wrote, If we select a flat street a mile long, containing a row of lamps, it will be noticed that from where we stand, the lamps gradually decline to the ground, the last one being apparently quite on the ground. Take the lamp at the end of the street and walk away from it a hundred yards, and it will appear to be much nearer to the ground than when we were close to it. Keep on walking away from it, and it will appear to be gradually depressed until it is last seen on the ground and then disappears. Now, according to the astronomers, the whole mile was only depressed about eight inches from one end to the other so that this eight inches could not account for the enormous depression of the light as we recede from it. This proves that the depression of the pole star can and does take place in relation to a flat surface. No, because it's the North Star, which means it's directly over the middle of your flat Earth map, which means it is visible from everywhere on the map. There is no feasible way that that could be the truth. Nothing he just said made sense. This is why I say it's an intelligence issue. Simply because we increase our distance from it, the same as from the street lamp. In other okay, but the problem is, if we go back to your flat earth map, there is nowhere on this map where this is at anything approaching a 90 degree angle. Like, even this star right over here, would still be visible here. If this is Polaris, it's visible here. He has drawn a completely arbitrary dome. Or the enormous depression of the light as we recede from it. This proves that the depression of the pole star can and does take place in relation to a flat surface, simply because we increase our distance from it, the same as from the street lamp. In other words, the further away we get from any <laughs> object funny, above Dylan. us, as a star, for example, the more it is depressed. And if we go far enough, it will sink, or appear to sink, to the horizon, and then disappear. Like, they really just have no idea what they're talking about. Furthermore, Globe Earthers always mention visibility issues specifically with Polaris, because it can only be seen by observers north of the equator, which could seemingly fit their narrative of disappearing due to curvature. Many other stars and constellations, however, are visible for a much wider spectrum of observers, far beyond what would be possible on a globe. Because they're not oriented at the North Pole. Yes, some a star that is directly... Par uh, what would it be? Yeah. A star that, that is on level with the equator would be visible from the North and South Hemispheres by almost all people. However... 
a star visible, a star directly linked to the North Pole will only be visible in the Northern Hemisphere. It will be visible to both the Eastern and Western, but not the Northern. For instance, Ursa Major, very close to Polaris, can be seen from 90 degrees north latitude, the North Pole, all the way down to 30 degrees south latitude. The constellation Vulpecula can be seen from 90 degrees north latitude, all the way to 55 degrees south latitude. Notice how he doesn't actually give their position in the sky. Taurus, Pisces, and Leo can be seen from 90 degrees north, all the way to 65 degrees south. Aquarius and Libra can be seen from north. This is all the impossible way to, to film from degrees. a spinning ball, he says, as multiple stars end up beneath the horizon. If these stars were actually overhead, they would not be visible going beneath the horizon. South. Aquarius and Libra can be seen from 65 degrees north to 90 degrees south. The constellation Virgo is visible from 80 degrees north down to 80 degrees south. And Orion can be seen from 85 degrees north all the way to 75 degrees south latitude. How is this possible after thousands of years? Because the position of the stars doesn't change all that much. Over thousands of years. Billions, sure. Observers on a ball Earth, regardless of any supposed tilt or inclination, should not logically be able to see this far. And I... <laughs> Does he hear himself? Like, does he hear himself? And once again, rather than the declination of the pole star proving the globe, it provides yet more evidence that Earth is a stationary plane. Yes, all of them move. So does the Earth. During... Let's see. Uh, Flat Earth government psyop. Why would they lie? Here, let's see. Why would they lie? Why would they lie? What possible reason could there be? This is where it's going to get weird, by the way. This is where you're going to hear weird stuff. When confronted with blatant NASA lies and obvious globe inconsistencies, the number one most common frequently asked question is undoubtedly, but why would anyone lie about the shape of the Earth? My question is actually, how did, was NASA instructing Erasthenes? Did he tell Erasthenes to lie? For what purpose would there be a multi-generational, worldwide conspiracy to cover up the truth of our home? Wait, hang on. What are they doing here? Wait, you're kidding. Look at what they did to the U.S. This one is clearly undersized. They made this one too small. If you make this bigger, it actually reflects the size of the United States. <laughs> and this one is slightly too large. If you look at it, this is not right. This is not the correct location of Spain and Italy. Right here. They should be... No. <laughs> also, Brazil is too big. ...worldwide conspiracy to cover up the truth of... And that's, of course, assuming... I saw this one on, uh, on Twitter. This looks like it's edited. Like, if you look at it, it looks like it's been edited in some way. In fact, both of them have clearly been somewhat edited because they're too, like, squished. But that's the other thing, too, is a lot of the time they'll use photos that aren't even from NASA. ...of our home. Why would NASA spend billions of dollars building rockets? Also, keep in mind... He chose to compare 2012 and, what was it, 2002, I think? What, what, did, what did he do? It was 2012 and 2022, right? What he didn't do was look at 2007 and 97, which are identical. These are identical sizes. The cloud cover is the only difference. Identical. South America, South America. You could layer these on top of each other, and they would come out perfect. Um, in fact, if you look at it, the sizing of everything is very consistent for everything except, uh, 2012. In fact, yeah, it was 20, he did 2012 and he did, so here, yeah, 2012 doesn't match the rest of these maps. The rest of these maps match one another. 2012 doesn't. That's it. Just to prank the population about outer space. By the way, no, nothing in here, by the way 
ci no citations for where any of these images came from. What on earth would be the point of hiding the flat earth? To begin with, almost anyone being asked this question is not directly involved in creating or maintaining the lie, so insisting a definitive answer of motive from completely uninvolved parties is impossible. When someone tells a lie, their motives for doing so and their true inner purposes are known to them alone. People being lied to can attempt to deduce and guess at the reasons for a liar's actions, but ultimately, that information can only be revealed by the liars themselves. So Occam's razor would be, if all the evidence suggests somebody's lying, they're lying. If there's no evidence to suggest they're lying, they're probably telling the truth. We flat earthers are not the malefactors in this situation, so we simply cannot adequately answer No, but you sure are the morons. There's such a question without being inside the minds of the culprits. It should be obvious that asking uninvolved parties about the inner motives of other people is a fruitless and impossible endeavor. Huh? Being inside the minds of the culprits. It should be obvious that asking uninvolved parties about the inner motives of other people. So, we're blaming Freemasonry, which makes me an involved party. I, I mean, here's the problem. They say, if you don't, a if you ask uninvolved parties, what can, you know, they won't know. But if you ask the, uh, the involved parties, they say that they're lying. I don't know a single Freemason who thinks the Earth is actually flat. And I know 32nd degree Masons. I know, I think I know a 33rd degree. None of them think the earth is flat. None of them think we're, this is the other thing is everybody's like, oh, well, you know, it's the 32nd degree Masons. You know, that's where you really learn everything. Almost every Mason in my lodge is a 32nd degree. Almost all of them. It's not what people think it is. Being a 32nd degree mason is just sitting through a specific, uh, a specific play, basically. There are a lot of masons who will sit down and they'll tell you that, you know, hidden within the meanings or deeper meanings and within those meanings or even more meanings. Um, and yeah, sometimes they're right. Sometimes it's stuff that was applied later. Uh, but yeah, no, there's, there's no masonic teaching, no masonic belief that the earth is in fact flat and we're hiding this. People is a fruitless and impossible endeavor. So why then is this universally the number one most common frequently asked question right after someone identifies a flat earther? Because if you can't explain why somebody would lie about that, then there's no reason to listen to you. The query is almost always accompanied by a smirk, a sneer, an eye roll, or outright laughter, and this gives away the underlying intention of asking. The majority of people asking this question have not actually done any research into the subject and know full well that uninvolved parties cannot provide another's motive. Therefore, this knee-jerk phrase, but why would they lie, so commonly repeated, is Ah, uh, yes, the flat earth research, which invariably proves the earth is round. Much more so a snarky defense mechanism than a genuine question. It's not a defense mechanism. It's asking you a question that we know you can't answer so that you'll shut the hell up. It's that simple. Incessantly asking why the world's governments would lie without first doing your due diligence in researching the endless evidence and experiments proving that they most certainly are lying is like coming upon a bloody... That's the other thing, is they do this. Where they'll be like, oh, well, look at these photos. These prove that the Earth isn't flat because you can see horizontally. But they don't explain what's going on over here. They say it's a perspective issue, but it's not. If you took a telescope up here and you aimed it at that vanishing point, you would not see the other side of the planet. Proving that they most certainly are lying is like coming upon a bloody homicidal crime scene with your eyes closed and refusing to believe it happened because you cannot fathom the perpetrator's motive. And until someone offers up a reason, suitable to your subjective sensibilities only then might you open so your as for the masonic stuff i I'm, I'm in a weird spot with masonry right now where i'm trying to understand some things that i've come across uh i know some masons who believe some weird stuff i also know masons who think that they're crazy um so it's hard to say i i have i haven't been in my lodge in a couple of months um 
I've been I've been figuring some stuff out, basically. I uh, I'm also frustrated with uh with some stuff the older guys have been saying about younger guys and getting involved and everything because it's like how are we supposed to progress with no guidance? And they're like, well, you're supposed to look for it yourself. And it's like, I don't think you did. Um, I think somebody guided you. Your eyes and investigate the obvious murder. Flat earthers are like senior detectives on the crime. Well, no. investigate the subject. <laughs> I love this. Eyes closed is like coming upon a bloody homicidal crime scene with your eyes closed and refusing to believe it happened because you cannot fathom the perpetrator's motive. And until someone offers up a no, flat eartherism is like coming behind, coming across a bloody murder scene and not investigating because you don't think a murder occurred. Reason suitable to your subjective sensibilities. Like being believing the earth is round is walking into a murder scene and going, "Oh my God, someone was murdered here." I wonder why. I wonder how, and then investigating. Being a flat earther is walking in and going, there was no murder here. Only then might you open your eyes and investigate the obvious murder. Flat earthers are like senior detectives on the crime scene, collecting evidence, taking photographs, and cataloging proofs. He has no idea how right he is about them being like senior detectives on a crime scene. <laughs> but not in the way he thinks. While ignorant globe defenders act like smug rookies rocking up late, and claiming we are looking in the wrong place. No, it's more like the FBI showing up and asking them if they've considered everything else. So flat earthers cannot be expected to give definitive... Okay, this one's based. That's based. ...inclusive answers to this inappropriately directed question. So flat earthers don't have to explain anything. Got it. But we can attempt to deduce and guess what the reason or reasons may be. As for the specific question of... Why would NASA and other government space agencies spend billions of dollars on this deception? It should be noted that these organizations are funded by money taken from the pockets of taxpayers in their respective countries. In other words, these government space agencies are annually freely receiving billions of dollars that their populations are forced to pay them. For what? NASA alone received $24 billion of American taxpayer money in 2022, which amounts to over $65 million every single day. Also, are these missile launches, SpaceX? What are we looking at here, my guy? That makes NASA and other government space agencies among the biggest black-budget black holes in existence. So what are they doing with the money, my guy? Sucking in trillions of dollars over the decades. Billions. It's just to give us a bunch of rockets launched into the ocean and CGI cartoons on television. Maintain so he's actually said nothing. Maintaining the illusion is comparatively cheap. So rather than being some unrealistically expensive enterprise, it is actually an incredibly lucrative and profitable scam. For what purpose? I love how he's just gone and been like, we don't care, we don't need to care about motive. We don't need to know why it happened. It's happening. I don't need to explain why. Beyond simply being a productive moneymaker, however, the entire concept of outer space, along with the globe Earth and the so-called Big Bang, has created and promoted a nihilistic, materialist worldview where any idea of God or intelligent design is removed and replaced with random, haphazard coincidence. Except the Bible in no way says the Earth is flat. Ever. Also, there's no reason God could not design a round earth. Instead, Like, that's the other thing I'm noticing. These guys are also theologically illiterate. It's not just astronomy. Instead of humans being purposefully created by a purposeful creator, instead of earth being intelligently designed by an intelligent designer, we are told that life, nature, and everything else was all brought into existence for nothing and by accident. We are told that before time, space, matter consciousness, intelligence, and life, that there was absolutely nothing. This is, I don't know who he's trying to argue with here. I'm a Christian. Like, this is not, this is doing nothing to me. It's not shaking my worldview at all. <laughs> I'm a Christian who fully believes the earth is round. Then, in an instant, and for no- But he didn't even say what the motive is to make money. 
Why, why come up with this lie? What does this specific lie do? Also, NASA was founded in 1958. We've known the Earth was round since, what, 230 BC? If not earlier? No reason at all. The nothingness exploded. And instead of destroying things like every other explosion, this explosion created things. It created everything. They're so dumb. Like, it's so obvious that they lack the capacity to go more than one logical step in any direction. Aristotle would just kill these people. The nothingness explosion somehow created space. Uh, so the Bible basically says that, uh, uh here we go. There, I'll, I'll just go get it. Ugh. So, the Bible, which no Flat Earther has actually read with any degree of sincerity, particularly Owen Benjamin, I would love to talk to that guy because I would have a field day with him, considering we are, well, I, I won't say we're politically similar, but we have similar opinions on, well, we have similar opinions on how bad the government is, we just have very different opinions on why it's that bad. Uh, let's see, so... Genesis, taken from the interlinear. So this is a direct Hebrew, Hebrew to English, literal. It's uh, the, the literal translation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth being without form and empty and darkness on the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moving gently on the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be... Let light, uh, then God said, let light be, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good, and God separated between the light and the darkness, and God called the light day, and he called the darkness night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Whether or not Genesis is supposed to be read literally or cosmologically is a huge debate within Christianity and Judaism. Um... It is not a debate in Islam. Uh, in Islam, there is no questioning of the text. The text is literal. The text is correct. Um, that is a, a big difference between Christianity, Judaism, and Islam is that uh, Christians and Jews both are taught to... Uh, basically, we're taught that if, if the book says something that is not true, we're supposed to question our interpretation of the book. We're not supposed to question reality. If the book were to say, uh, it's never going to say anything quite this direct, but if the book were to say, the sky is green, the job of a Christian is not to say, well, clearly the, the sky is green, looking up at a blue sky. The Christian's job is to say, well, what does it mean by the sky is green? What else does green symbolize in the Bible? What, how can I, how can I, you know, go, how can I understand this? Um, Islam does not do that. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to refrain from speaking further. I have very strong opinions theologically about Islam. Uh, but, you know, this is not, this is not the place to, to talk about it. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's, so that's kind of the, that, that's the thing is, if you're reading the Bible and what the Bible says is definitively in in contradiction to reality, then it must be your interpretation that is contradictory to reality. It can't be the book itself. That's kind of the way it works. Time and all matter in the universe by ejaculating this creationary explosive primordial soup and the debris shooting outwards at 670 million miles per hour for over 14 billion years finally culminated to create you. First, some of the more gaseous nothing came together forming suns and stars, then solid pieces yeah, buddy, we get it. The, out the, of which... The, the Big Bang is not a well-explained or understood theory, but guess who created it? It was Christians within a Christian framework. The Big Bang is a Christian theory. Like, the, the Big Bang is what I just read. 
Like, tell, tell me what this sounds like to you. Tell me what it sounds like. You know? <clears throat> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was being, and the earth being without form and empty, and darkness on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved gently on the face of the waters. Then God said, Let light be, and there was light. What does let light be and there was light sound like to you? Now you'll notice it doesn't say that in the beginning there was nothing. It says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Single-celled living organisms magically appeared, got to work dividing and multiplying. But like this is this is useless to me because I don't like the Big Bang as as a theory for how existence came to be i don't like the the suggestion that life originated from inorganic particles being struck by lightning in the right way and yes i know that is an extremely dumbed down version of abiogenesis but we've never done it we've never proven abiogenesis to be possible we have we've tried over and over and over again with all sorts of different combinations of amino acids and environments and electrical pulses. We cannot take non-living matter and make it into living matter. We cannot do it. We have yet to figure it out. Um, and in my opinion, until we do figure it out, I I simply will not ascribe to that theory. Uh, I I am in some senses a creationist, but I'm not a young Earth creationist. I believe that God did create the universe. That God did create life. But that it was not, you know, 6,000 years ago. It was not done by hand in the way we seem to think. God is a will. Uh, God can take human form. But God is, at the end of the day, you know, God wills things into existence. He doesn't have to sit, sit there in front of a, a craftsman's table and physically carve the earth out of stone, you know? Mutated and morphed into various forms of sea life. Which adapted and evolved. Yeah, and we get it. Worldwide. We, we, find we get it. Scientists have thought that we came from nothing, for no reason, and that one day in the future, the sun will burn up, killing us all, and destroying everything we built. Okay, yeah, we get it. You think that atheists want us to believe that the earth is round, or that the earth is round because they're trying to, in some way convince us that life is pointless and God does not exist. The problem with this is that Christians have believed the earth is round for far longer than Christians have thought the earth wasn't round. Like, Christians have known the earth is round since the very beginning of Christianity. Because the Greeks proved it 250 or so years before Christianity came into existence. The earth has never been flat in a Christian framework. Never. This fatalistic, nihilistic, materialist creation and destruction story has fabricated a veritable atheistic religion that masquerades as scientific truth. By removing Earth from the stationary center of the universe, they have moved us physically Not. and home. And to us. The most intelligent of the intelligent designers. Okay, designs. so this is just useless because now he's not even arguing with with, you know, me. Inherent significance in the flat earth model of the cosmos. Because this is just stupid because it's not related. It's, it's not anti-Christian. Christianity doesn't say the, 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 the earth is flat. <laughs> like, um, also robot Wookiee. I know that we've shown that you can get amino acids out of inorganic particles. You can get proteins to become amino acids. Or it might be the other way around. Let me look it up really quick. Ah, other way around. So we need, uh, yeah, I had it backwards. It's it's uh, amino acids into proteins. We've taken amino acids and we have gotten them to become proteins. We have not gotten amino acids to become living cells. We have not done that. Antarctica is the elevated outer rim, encompassing and extending around all oh the other continents, while the North Pole. Well, that's uh, we're getting close to the end of tonight's stream, so I I want to I want to do something fun to to relax now. So we're gonna do some nukes. We're gonna switch over and we're gonna do some nukes. 
Um, let me close this guy. We'll come back to that tomorrow. Oh, no, I've got to fix the stream now. Hang on. Window capture. Chrome, Chrome, Chrome. Wait, what? Where'd it go? Where did the window capture go? Hmm. It was here a moment ago. No, that's not it. No, that's not it. Uh, well, what if I... Maybe I'll snag this guy. Move that over there, and then I can move you here, and then I can close you. And then I can... Ah, and it went away again. What is happening? Capture method. Let's do Windows 10. Let's switch back to automatic. There it is. Got it. <laughs> Took a second, but I... it's doing the thing again. What the hell? Wait, what? It was not doing this with the last one. I'm going to try something. I am going to try something. Nukes top five. Concerned Father Chris from Fargo, North Dakota says this is weird. There's like a weird cutoff thing going on. You know what I think it might be? Maybe it's here. Let's do this. Let's remove window capture, and then we're going to add in window capture. Uh, window cap. Add new source. Going to call this one Chrome. We're going to have it snag this guy. Weird. Just like super weird stuff. Oh boy. I think somebody's home. I think, I think somebody may have just arrived to me. This it's just so weird. Why is it doing this? Amanda! Streaming! Still streaming! Let me, let me try this. This way. Get things fixed a little bit here. That's definitely better. Let me see how much bigger I can make it so I can... Uh... That looks to be about right. Better. There we go. All right. Let's do this. Four-year-old son has been behaving. Uh, also, let's see. Okay. Being very strangely, he says that over the last three or four days, the child has said that he just doesn't want to go in the bedroom because he says, quote, there is a monster in there. There we go, that's better. Obviously, Chris just dismissed these claims as a child's overactive imagination. But then, one night at around 2 a.m., the boy is fast asleep. Wait, oh my god, you guys are right, you haven't gotten an Awu in a while. Oh, wait, what the hell? Oh my god, have these been below all that this whole time? Where's the, uh... Oh my god, that's been down there the whole time. Nope, stop doing that. 
just want specifically no. this is killing me this is this is just the worst uh let's see here let's grab you and take you out of there for no still really not what i wanted I'm telling you guys, sometimes, man. There we go. Now I was able to grab it. Beautiful. Okay. That's what I wanted to do. Back to it. In bed, when something happens that Chris and his wife simply can't explain. Something truly shocking. Also, I'm just going to really quick, before we get into this guy, I want to go through the super chats that I do have. Uh, let's see, what do we have? Yeah? Hi? Uh, where, let's see. Trying to, okay. Rainfall said, are we saying Earth is just a big old mommy milker? No, I'm not saying that, but you you can, if you want. Uh, Kellen said, if you have questions about great circle and rum lines, when it comes to distances on a globe versus a map, hit me up. Also how maps are stretched. Yeah. Projections are wild when you go and look at like how big everything actually is. Uh, Greenland, much smaller than you might think. Um, what else is there? Uh, totally not JMO said, if I send you Moxie, the first deluxe volume of Berserk and donate two fifty on a podcast episode, will you read it? Yes. Not sure exactly what it is, but I will. I will. That seems like an appropriate deal. Uh, hysterical chaos said, ah, I see your recent flat earth tweet was foreshadowing. I'd still pay you to have someone on your show and chat with them a while. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I'd be happy to sit down and have a, a polite debate about flat earth with a flat earther. I just I, I have yet to have one approach the conversation in good faith. I've invited several. They never come on. And people who, if they were correct, would be massively benefited by the size of my platform. Um, and they never want to. And I think it's because, I, I think a lot of the, like, flat earth influencers are grifters. I think that they realize that they can just put out low quality stuff um, low effort stuff and make money off of it. So I think that that's one, one aspect. Uh, I also think a lot of them know that like deep down, I think they know that they're wrong. Um, and if they actually go and they have the discussion, it'll take away the mystery. Um, <clears throat> kitten said, do drop your Venmo cause sending money on here. Uh, I, we should set up a lore lodge Venmo. Honestly, I'll probably do that. That would allow us to have people send stuff in ahead of time, too. Um, the only issue is that it would make it kind of hard to track. So, we'll figure it out. Um, what else do we have? Mustang Mama said, Intrusive thoughts are telling me to close my eyes while I drive on the next straightaway. <laughs> um, Party like 1776 said, Remember, people, the scariest thing you can hear is I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Exactly. Great Reagan quote. Uh, Kellen super chatted. It was real, but used to see how far fear. Ah, okay. So you're talking about the, the, the panini. Yeah. I think there, I, so I'm trying to remember exactly what the context was, but I think it was Hillary Clinton who had said, I uh, recently, I don't think she's the originator of the quote, but I think she said, I uh, never let a good crisis go to waste recently on TV. Um, not entirely positive of that one, but you know, I, I think that's kind of a, a very good thing. And I think both the Democrats and the Republicans are guilty of doing this as well as parties in other countries is when you get a crisis, when you get a disaster that happens, a lot of the time they'll use the opportunity to massively overstep their boundaries. Great example is 9-11. 9-11 happened. The appropriate response was to track down who did it maybe lock things down for a couple of years with the TSA and all that. But instead of, you know, beefing up security at airports and tracking down who perpetrated 9-11, they gave us the Patriot Act. And they said, well, now we have the NSA and they can look into all your documents at any time. They can track your text messages, your phone calls, anything you want to do. Um, 
you know, they basically took a, a legitimate disaster and then turned it into a way to spy on Americans and get us involved in wars all over the place. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's the one thing I will say is, you know, regardless of who's in office, when there is a crisis, they will almost always use it to increase their own power. Um, you know, I, I'll say this much under, I, I was very surprised, uh, that Trump didn't take the opportunity to, I mean, I wouldn't say necessarily surprised. It would be a massive step, but I was a little, part of me did wonder if Trump was going to use the pandemic to cancel the election somehow. Um, that said, I think that Trump legitimately thought he was going, he had a chance at winning. Uh, so that might explain why he didn't. Um, but he also might have the integrity not to do that. I don't know. I've never voted for the guy. I've also never voted Democrat for president. Um, I vote libertarian every election. So, you know, like I said, my, I, I, meh. Um, but what else do we have? Uh, flat earthers think earth is Minecraft with the render distance set really low. Basically, um, let's see, I... <laughs> Totally not, James said, I wish for the milk for its sustenance, but if I only drink it the milk, my flesh will fall away. Aiden, join the congregation. Fear is fine. <laughs> I love these. Um, MasterChef314 became a member and asked, thank you, is there any plan to upload Weird Bible as a podcast on Spotify and other platforms? All I can find is a fan-made one. I didn't even know there was a fan-made one. Uh, but yeah, we can get that uploaded. Uh, we've been meaning to, I think it's just been the kind of thing that's fallen out, fallen, but, uh, ah, fallen between the cracks, but yeah, uh, we probably won't upload them all at once. We'll probably upload them once a week and then once a month, once they start going, um, to that, but yeah, no, I didn't vote Biden McPerson. <laughs> I said, I have never voted for a Democrat or a Republican for president. Which is why I always laugh so much when, like, people on the internet try and call me a fascist or something. I'm like, I vote for the anti- I vote for the most anti-fascist party there is every single time. You know? Oh, yeah, I have a lot of lore you guys probably haven't heard before because I haven't gone into it. <laughs> I was, uh, I was very active in politics when I was in college. I was libertarian. I was, uh... I started a Turning Point USA chapter back when it was still a libertarian organization, and then uh, I got kicked out of Turning Point USA for trying to start a, sorry, for trying to set up a meeting with the campus NAACP to uh, help fight back against the rise of white nationalism on campus. I, I literally, I just went to their VP, as I was VP of the Turning Point chapter, I went to the NAACP VP and I said, hey, I feel like you guys have a warped perspective of how we feel, and I feel like my people have a warped perspective of how you feel. Let's get together and we can both fight against this. We can both fight against white nationalism and white supremacy, you know, without it being adversarial. Conservative and liberal can work together on this. And uh, NAACP vice president was all for it. He was super excited. When I brought the idea back to Turning Point, uh, the president got mad at me for going over her head and then had me uh, removed. Then I voted, I put forward a motion to impeach her. It was unanimous. Everybody wanted her gone, but the organization decided to keep her. Um, yeah, I, uh, sheesh, I helped compile a dossier on a bunch of campus uh, white supremacists, neo-Nazis, when I was a junior. Um, I did not decide what would be done with the dossier. I was just kind of, my, my main job was antagonize them. And then the other two guys, uh, put the, put the dossier together and put it out there. Um, I had no involvement in it being posted on every billboard on campus, every, uh, cork board and everything. I didn't do that. I was in class. Um, and the leader of the organization was in that class with me and he came out afterwards and threatened me. And I was like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, I, I've been here the whole time, man. I've been sitting next to you in class. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, I actually stayed across the hall from Charlie Kirk uh, at CPAC one year. He, um, he came into our room and asked us, well, he came and knocked on the door to our room and asked us to keep it down. Um, we weren't making all that much noise. We were just having a few drinks and listening to music. I guess he wanted to quietly drink white wine in his room across the hall. Guy was just kind of weird. Um, <laughs> you know? 
but I, uh, yeah, so that's, you know, <laughs> that's just some of the lore. I, uh, I was vice president of college Republicans, uh, for about a month and a half. And then I was impeached cause I called a neo-Nazi gay in a group chat. Um, my roommate sophomore year was gay. Uh, he and I were great friends. Um, this is not me saying I have a gay friend. This is me telling you that the reason I called the neo-Nazi gay was because I knew it would get out a rise, a rise out of him. Uh, I had nothing to do with my own feelings. Um, my, uh, my gay roommate, I used to refer to him as my, uh, my starburst, my juicy contradiction. Cause he was, uh, a gay Trump supporting theater major Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's just some of the lore, you know? Um, most of what I did in college was piss off the two extremes. Um, the, the, you know, the, the far right and the far left. That was most of my campus politics experience. Um, there's definitely a few things that I said that probably I, I look back and I'm like, yeah, that was a bad take. Uh, but you know, we all, we all grow. We all learn. I don't think anybody would want to be judged for the person they were at the age of 19, you know? Yes. Uh, I was going to finish up this, uh, video and then be done. Okay. I also, I thought you weren't going to be home till nine. Ah, my bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, also to answer your question, Exile and Throne, Young Americans for Liberty. I would say Young Americans for Liberty is probably your best bet. Uh, they are the most genuinely libertarian and they have the least controversy about them. Not saying that controversy can't necessarily be a good thing, but when, it's, when it sounds like getting started, Young Americans for Liberty. Um, just going through. Yeah. Wait, what's the damn what in response to? It's definitely quick. That definitely, like, it seems like somebody getting y yoinked. The boy cries out when he appears to get shoved out of bed by some invisible force. Chris says that his son cried out in shock, but thankfully, the boy was okay and completely unharmed. Chris says that the previous owner of their house passed away right in the living room. And he wonders if this tragic history has anything to do with what's happening to their son. Oh yeah, sorry, Bard. I forgot to mention that I boxed a Nazi sophomore year of college. Um, I have part of the video somewhere. My friend Mikey might have the full video. Um, uh, gay Trump supporter? Yeah. Gay Catholic Trump supporting theater major. I feel like there was one other thing in there, but I can't totally remember what it was. Um... Yeah, I can't remember what the other thing was. I feel like there was one more thing in there. Uh, but, you know. Also, that you know, Lost Barai, I'll say this much. You know, I don't think anybody should hate anybody just because of who they voted for, uh, especially in the last couple of elections. I, I mean, Hillary Clinton's just awful. Just terrible. Um, Trump, not much better. Uh... I don't think Trump is directly responsible for nearly as many deaths as I would argue Hillary Clinton is, but he's not like a good person, you know? So when I see it, you know, it's, it's one thing if somebody is, you, you got to judge based on what parts of the platform someone's enthusiastic about when it comes to politics. Cause at the end of the day, you've basically got two choices for the most part. Um, I had a lot of people yell at me in 2016 for voting for Gary Johnson because they figured I helped Trump win. In 2020, I had a lot of people yell at me for voting for Joe Jorgensen because they thought I helped Biden win. 
you've only really got two options. You can do a protest vote and vote third party. Um, but never hate somebody just because they voted Democrat or Republican, because more more likely than not, they voted for economic reasons. It's almost always economic reasons. Um, you know, it's I don't I don't like left wing economic policy. I think it's going to make my life harder, so I'm going to go vote for the right wing guy. Like that's that's most of what voting is for most people. Um, I know some people who their single issue is gun rights. Um, you know, some people, their single issue is gay rights. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of people right now who are planning not to vote for Biden because of Palestine. You know, it's, I don't think anybody should be judged based on the way they voted. I think they should be judged based on what they were enthusiastic about. Um, hold the door. A woman named Nadine has been experiencing some very strange and unexplained events in her home in Alabama. I don't even know if I'm voting this year because I'm not going to vote. I, I'm, I mean, I'm not voting for Biden. That's, that's a given. Fuck that guy. Um, you know, it's, he's not even the one in charge there. That, that man is not, not there anymore. He is, he is cooked. Um, at the same time, I, I don't love Trump. Um, you know, I'm not, not a huge fan. But, uh, I also, the Libertarians haven't put somebody up yet. I mean, I, for the most part, I like Josh Smith. It looks like he might end up getting the Libertarian nomination. Smith is, uh, I've, I've been on his show. I've talked to him. Uh, there are a few things about him that I'm not huge on. Uh, but I won't, I won't be endorsing anybody officially. And I definitely won't be endorsing anybody until like October, even privately to my friends. Cause you, you really got to wait, you know? That said, Biden and the way he's done the IRS and everything, absolutely not. Out of the question. If Trump came out and said he's abolishing the IRS on day one, I'd vote for him. Because, like, to be honest, that's the biggest thing I have a problem with. Like, the IRS this year fucked me over so bad. And in a completely illegitimate way it's not like i was cheating on my taxes they went back to 2021 you know it's a, oh we're gonna hire 87,000 new agents but don't worry they're only targeting rich people it, within months within months i log on and i find out that they have assessed a 8600 dollar uh balance owed from 2021 a year where i made twenty four thousand dollars, and i even went in i sat with an irs agent in an irs office and i explained the situation and i handed him the documents and he told me i need to call like three other offices and i need to make sure i do it early in the morning or late at night and blah blah blah, blah. it's just ridiculous and they're targeting americans they're targeting small business owners and they they it's in their handbooks it's you know we do this we target small business owners because they have the most to lose and the least money to put forward to protect themselves also give me one second Uh, all right. So, but yeah, to get, uh, to get back in here, apparently this dog is upset about something. Very strong. Hold the door. A woman named Nadine has also been experiencing some very bit. strange and unexplained events in her home in Alabama. Now, many viewers believe that they can hear a voice whisper something after the dog barks that sounds like, lay over there. Like, lay over there. I, I love how they hear just the silliest of things. But what do you hear, if anything? As for Nadine, she says that she's a skeptic and doesn't really believe in ghosts at all. But then one night, she's looking after her two-year-old daughter, Blake, and something happens that freaks her right out. Blakey, you okay? Kid's upset about something. Do you want me to go open the door? Why? 
No. Okay. Okay, I, I'm honestly freaking the f out and I don't know what to do. Just a couple minutes ago, I got up and I closed my door because she kept pointing to my room saying, Mommy, Mommy, someone's over there. And, and she was terrified. She, she, was, she was terrified. Of course, freaking me out. So I went over there and she just said, No, Mommy, come here. Come here, Mommy. Sit, sit, Mommy. Don't go over there. And so I called the dog and I closed my door. And as you can see, dude, she's still terrified. She's still terrified. She doesn't want me going over there. She doesn't want me open the door. I am, dude, I'm terrified. Blakey? Mommy's gonna go open the door, okay? I'll be right back. It's okay. This is interesting. I'll be right back. Because there's the general, like, idea that children are more susceptible to she's hiding her face. the paranormal than adults are for some reason or another. Some people say that it's because our brains develop and we start to uh, filter things out basically you know you don't smell you you know how your friends houses smell but you don't know how your own house smells it's kind of like that that people say oh well our brains eventually learn to filter out the things that aren't physically there it's okay baby okay okay Okay. On the other hand, there's the possibility that the kid saw, like, a coat on a rack. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, tell me I'm not... What do I do? Little two-year-old Blake is terrified of something in Nadine's bedroom. So much so that Nadine has to close the door to calm her daughter down. So could it be that little Blake saw a supernatural entity? Or just what was scaring her? Let me know what you think. Alone on the farm. Tasha D and her husband move into an 1840s farmhouse in rural upstate New York. The happy couple begins to renovate their new home, but soon Tasha begins to experience some very unsettling and unexplained events. These strange incidents only seem to occur when Tasha is home alone, so her husband is a bit skeptical. So one day, a picture frame in the house inexplicably falls to the floor. Tasha grabs her phone and starts to record in hopes of proving to her husband that something's just not quite right in the old farmhouse. See, and you think I'm crazy. The first time I'm here by myself, there's a picture on the floor, and it just... But things soon start to get even weirder, because the family dogs begin to act really strange. Even weirder. That's not... That's not a draft. But things soon start to get even weirder. And... It would sure be hard to... I mean, without seeing the other room, I can't say for sure. You could set this up with fishing line on the knob and then use your foot to move the door if there's space on the other side of the wall, but... but things soon it accelerates start to get pretty fast to be using a foot. Because the family dogs begin to act hmm. really strange. Why are you running? Archie's done this before. What is that? Wait, what the hell? Is that a is that? What the hell? It's a weird camera artifact, if that's what it is. Because it just, like, vanishes completely. Kind of appears as... Yeah, it's hard to say what that would be. Oh, 
Another day, and Tasha is recording a candid video of her dogs to post to Snapchat. When this happens. Look at them, destroying the living room over one toy. <laughs> Silly. Right after posting the video to Snapchat, a worried friend reaches out to Tasha to warn her. Silly. Right after posting the video to Snap. Look at them, destroying the living room over one toy. I mean, it does definitely look like a shadow goes up the wall, but the question is why? So where does it start? All right, so starts around there that you see something start to move. So the one thing I will say is that it does look like it could just be something passing outside, but the whole room would have to. Hmm. <laughs> Silly. Right after posting the video to Snapchat, a worried friend reaches out to Tasha to warn her about what seems to be a strange shadow-like figure moving up the wall right beside her dogs. Tasha has no idea what the creepy shadow could be. But the dog should have responded to it. So she shares her story to TikTok, hoping to find answers. The video soon grabbed the attention of millions of concerned TikTok viewers who wonder if Tasha might this have been. This is the kind of stuff I used to get tagged in before I stopped going on TikTok. Their normal presence by renovating the 180-year-old farmhouse. And then... One night, just after midnight, someone rings Tasha's doorbell. When she checks the security camera, what she sees chills her to her core. Downright chilly. dark shadow can be seen moving towards the outside deck chair and appears to just take a seat. It then gets up, moves away towards the right, and disappears. So did Tasha and her family move into a haunted farmhouse? Could the renovations be upsetting a lingering paranormal presence, causing it to act out? I'd be willing to believe it, but I definitely want to see more evidence. Let me know what you think. Imaginary friend. A woman from Oregon says that her young daughter claims that there is something living in their basement, hiding in the storage area just underneath the stairs. At first, of course, the mother dismisses these claims, just thinking it's the little girl's overactive imagination. But that same day, after hearing something strange coming from the basement, the mom decides to check the footage from their security camera. What she sees chills her to her core. that looks like a hand it's right here it looks like a hand did you see it a small pale hand can be seen reaching out from under the stairs before just disappearing even creepier both the child and the family cat seem to spot this bizarre apparition the little girl even seems to wave at something that we can't see. Now, unfortunately, this video... It could be a setup? It was shared to the internet without a direct source. So oh, no yeah. It's a setup. Horror. Just, that's just analog horror or something at that point. If there's no source, I'm immediately assuming that it's not real. Probably never know just what happened here. What walks in the woods? Reddit user no recognition 1998 says that this video was caught on a trail cam 20 miles out into the Idaho woods in the middle of nowhere. Now, there is no reason that anyone would be this far out in these isolated woods at this time of night. So what is this? See, I don't think the girl would have waved at a raccoon. That's the only thing. Is be this far out in these in the middle of nowhere. This video was caught on a trail cam. 20 miles out into the Idaho woods in the middle of nowhere. Now, there is no reason that anyone would be this far out in these isolated woods at this time of night. So what is this? It's a person for sure. Looks like a person wearing a skirt maybe? Let 
Wait, yeah, what the hell? It looks like a skirt, but also trousers? But the person also looks like they're bald, and like maybe their neck is at a really weird angle. And the walk is so strange. Someone or something walks past the forest trail cam at Weird. I I mean here's That actually looks like the description of a Wendigo. I mean, out in the woods, northern United States, twenty miles away from civilization. I mean that is like kinda That's it is a pale, emaciated figure wearing what could very well be Native American dress. Hmm. 4.37 in the morning, in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere. I mean, don't get me wrong, it could just be somebody playing a prank. But, weird. Curious Reddit viewers point out that this strange humanoid figure just looks kinda off. They say it's perhaps not even human at all, as it seems to have very Yeah, like, definitely a human figure. Seems to have very pale skin, thin frail arms, and a long neck. Now, well, no, is this a the one arm doesn't move as much as the other. Very lost and very strange person wandering around the remote woods of Idaho? Or is it something else? I leave that for you to decide. I mean, it's definitely not Lurking like in the darkness. There's only a few things that could be. One of them is somebody playing a prank. One of them would be, a, well, a, a Wendigo in the sense of a person who has gone crazy and lives off in the woods eating other humans. Hmm. I'm interested in that one, actually. I might try and reach out. What was the guy's, uh... What was it? No recognition 1998. Let's uh, give him a look-see on the TikTok. Fuck. Um. Let's see. No recognition 1998. Oh, it was on Reddit, not TikTok. I'm stupid. Uh, you slash no recognition 1998. Let's see. I'm going to message him. Hey man, reaching out because I saw your trail cam video on YouTube. Was wondering if you or your buddy would be interested in chatting about it. There we go. User no recognition 1998. All the features suggested lurking in the darkness. Ah, this okay. next extremely gotcha, popular totally. video was suggested so much, probably close to a thousand times, there was really no choice but to feature it here on Nuke's Top 5. So, Dustin Frazier says that he works the night shift at an allegedly haunted hotel in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. One Been night, there. Dustin is recording a Snapchat video to send to his friend, and something happens that makes his blood run cold. I'm just not to work, and... He's rocking the mullet. Like, like, all day today, I felt bad. Honestly, it's less like a little bit. I felt bad. And I don't know. I just like I feel like I need to go to the doctor, but like I'm constantly just like nauseous. And I don't really know why. Like I have tried to like take medicine for it and stuff, but I I don't know. It doesn't seem like it really does anything. Um but if you wanted to swing by, um, and 
say hey like you could oh i can't see i also hate that they always keep this room so fucking dark like come on now but anyways yeah if you wanted to swing by and say hey then you know you could but yeah i'm just chilling throughout the video strange voices and whispering can be heard I felt bad. Honestly, it's less like a little bit I'd to like take everything. I'm skeptical. Um, and I also hate that they always keep this room so fucking dark. Like, come on now. But creepiest of all, something can be seen standing in the shadows just oh, behind I didn't even Dustin. see that one. Not once, but twice. Some dark figure with a distorted skeletal face. Now that I did not catch. Now, at the time I'm recording this story, this video has gained a massive audience of over 19 million viewers, making it the most popular and most suggested video. But is it real? Or is it all just an elaborate I hoax? saw the second one, and my thinking was that could just be a shadow. Like, it's almost certainly staged. It's almost certainly staged, but I... I'd be willing to buy it if I had a chance to talk to the guy and he, he's, yeah, I'm, if it's anything, it's definitely paranormal, but it could also be fake. Those could be Halloween decorations. You decide. We need scary videos. So if you see a scary video that you think would be great on the top five, email us at nukestop5 at gmail.com. Caught on camera. Reddit user Dustin says that he and his family recently bought and moved into a historic 1800s terrace house in London, England. But a terrorist during house? renovations, Dustin says his doorbell security camera caught something really creepy. I mean, that looks like a person. Yeah, that's not paranormal. Well, that's just a night, person. Someone or something can be seen quickly taking a peek at Justin's front door. Then whoever or whatever it is appears to walk past the car in the driveway before disappearing off camera. Now, with the house's 200-year history, Justin is worried... Yeah, no, that was a person. ...that his renovations might have triggered some paranormal presence to act out. That was either a porch pirate or somebody casing the place for something else. But worried Reddit viewers warned Justin that he might be dealing with something even scarier a trespassing stranger that is scoping out his house for unknown reasons yeah so is this a ghost or is this a very real and potentially dangerous person you decide frozen in uh there was an ariana Gr grande concert in manchester that got bombed pretty bad so yeah the, the brits have definitely had some terrorism issues here in this creepy video a woman begins recording when her dog refuses to come back inside their house the dog seems frozen in place and refuses to even look also bushman i think i think it was that he was executed not for being a wendigo but for killing people he claimed were wendigos back at his owner in the swift runner case i think as she calls to him nigel what are you doing dog is not happy nigel The dog appears to be frozen in fear as it stares at something That's behind a shed not in their backyard. Fear. That is when the not woman fear. Looks around the corner. Her heart almost stops. It was a while ago. It might have been like a decade ago. The Manchester thing. So she sees two creepy glowing eyes staring right back at her. I'm going to go ahead and say raccoon or possum or cat. Now the video abruptly ends here and was reposted to the internet by social media outlets that just don't bother to credit the source. So with no explanation, it's hard to say exactly what's going on here. But the dog's freaked out reaction is strange. So just what do you think this dog is seeing looking back from the darkness? Cursed. A young woman in Japan claims that her grandmother kept a cursed photo album locked in one of her cupboards. The woman believed that her grandmother might have dabbled in dark magic, and that the cursed photo album and her grandmother's strange rituals might have led to her grandfather's strange, unexplained death 12 years earlier. Her grandfather allegedly took his own life inside the home, but the circumstances were very suspicious. 
The young woman says that for her part, she once viewed the cursed album herself, but that she became seriously ill immediately afterwards. That's definitely a creepy photo album, I'll say that much. But it looks more water damaged than anything. Since then, the young woman's grandmother has passed away. Yeah, I mean, it just looks like water damage to me. Since then, the young woman's grandmother has passed away, but she is still afraid of the home and the creepy photo album. She asked anonymous paranormal investigator Konico to remove and destroy the album, warning him that everyone who views the photo album becomes ill and that some of her family even believes that the cursed album can possess the viewer. So Konico explores the old abandoned home and finds the album. But he too starts to become ill and is forced to quickly leave the house, leaving behind both his phone and camera as he dashes out. See, that sounds like it could be power of suggestion to me. You tell somebody, hey, if you look at this thing, it's going to make you sick, and then they become sick. You know, just a little... The mind is a powerful thing. YouTube channel Fourth Wall is contacted and asked to retrieve his equipment and analyze the footage. What they find is downright chilling. Recovered footage from a phone that was used as a static camera shows a portrait of the woman's late grandfather just falling to the floor for unknown reasons. But that's not all. Be because easy enough to was actually that. recorded the moment he found and looked through the cursed photo album on camera. Something happens that Kaneko claims that he doesn't remember at all. Something terrifying. Why would he say excuse me? say free? Irie? Free. It says free. Why does it say free in English? Why is it blurred? That was not a drop. He set that down. He set the camera down. This is at 1.25 times speed. Sorry, you can hear Ella in the background. Did you see it? Kaneko hears a strange sound coming from somewhere inside the house. But when he turns to look, someone can be seen kneeling behind the glass of a sliding door. But Kaneko says there was no one else inside that house with him. After analyzing the footage, YouTube channel Fourth Wall believes that the woman's grandmother might have been responsible for her grandfather's death and that his spirit is unable to move on. 
I think Kanako lied and brought a friend with him. And that's why everything seems a little funky with that one. Watcher in the woods. YouTuber Creepy Outdoors frequently sets out to explore and spend the night deep in the wilderness of Canada. Also, Flaw, I would, I would join if I could, but not tonight. On one of these trips, he sets up camp just like any other night and scouts through the woods with a flashlight and a GoPro camera. But this time, something very unexpected happens and things take a creepy Oh, turn. the husky always has opinions. My favorite is when she expresses them at 3 a.m. Have the flashlight on one of the outdoors unable to move on hang on what watcher in the woods <laughs> youtuber creepy outdoors frequently sets out to explore and spend the night deep in the wilderness of canada on one of these trips he sets up camp just like any other night and scouts through the woods with a flashlight and a gopro camera but this time something very unexpected happens and things take a creepy turn I need to get out of here. Oh boy. Ooh. Why did he turn off the okay. light before she said something? That was f***ing creepy. I need to get out of here. The camper thinks he hears movement in the remote woods, so he cuts his flashlight so he can't be seen. Mm, no, he cut his camera too early. What? He cut his flashlight too early. Focus on him, because just then, a high-pitched voice can be heard calling out. I see you. Oh, f oh, hi. Now he's feeling a little on edge and wondering if there might be someone or something stalking him in the dark woods. He better have more he to this, to otherwise it's back to the one of the of most camp. fake things the I've ever seen. explorer says this is the scariest sound he's ever heard in the woods. Even though he was somewhere deep in the Canadian wilderness and completely removed from any towns or cities, he says that he hopes that the voice belonged to just a fellow camper having a laugh. You can watch this entire video over on the YouTube channel, Creepy Outdoors. Yeah, I'd be willing to take a wild guess that that one uh, was a setup. Especially since it comes from a channel called Creepy Outdoors. <laughs> um, Alright, but that does... Also, I gotta agree with this. The toddler does not need to be uh, told to be scared. Um... Yeah, but that that does it for tonight's stream. Uh, tomorrow, there will be a Liberty Biberty stream, and by that, I mean Helldivers 2. Uh, we're going to be hopping on. I'm going to be drinking a lot less than last time. Hell Drinkers got out of hand. So we're going to be switching to wine. I'll go get wine, because this, this happened last time. This bottle was full at the beginning of the stream. Yeah, that's not happening again. That was not fun for anybody. Amanda would like uh, Venmo payments for emotional damage. <laughs> for the record, I didn't, I, I didn't like do anything abusive. I just was a little too silly. And she wanted to go inside and I was not aware it was cold. It was a rough night, guys. Um, but uh, yeah, all right. I got the drunkest nickname. Yeah, that's true. All right, well, thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for being here. We had great numbers tonight. That was awesome. But uh, all right, I will see everybody tomorrow, at least those of you who watch these. And uh, also tomorrow, there is, of course, the uh, the brand new video going up. So that one is on the Riley Strain case. I know a lot of you guys asked me to look into it. Said I would. I did. Video is going up. All right. See everybody on the next one. Bye, guys.